Hello and welcome back to my RC channel and it's another glorious day at the Andy RC camp. Hmm, well, maybe not quite. But today I'm doing a shootout between two competing all-in-one FPV cameras. So let's see if I can get a couple of flights in before it starts to rain. These are the updated TE93 cam and the Hyperion 600 TV line cam. You can get the TE93 from microfpv.eu if you are based in Europe and the Micromotor Warehouse for anywhere else. And the Hyperion can be found in the flight test store as well as robotbirds.com and I am sure many other shops will be stocking them as well. These are both bolt-on micro FPV cams that have built-in regulators and are 25 milliwatts in power. Starting off with the TE93, I reviewed this on the channel before, but now it comes with a built-in 5 volt regulator that accepts a one cell battery, which is the same as the Hyperion. Compare these two cams together, and on paper they are pretty similar, so let's take a look at the specs. They are both 25 milliwatts. The Hyperion is 600 TV lines compared to the 540 TV lines of the TE93. The lux value of the Hyperion claims to be 1, whereas the TE93 is 0.008 lux, which means that the TE93 theoretically should be much better in lower light conditions. They both claim to have a field of view of 120 degrees. They both have a right-hand polarised cloverleaf antenna. The TE93 is also available with left-hand polarisation. The TE93 has 32 channels, whereas the Hyperion has the full 40 race band channels. The video format of the TE93 is PAL, whereas the Hyperion is NTSC. The TE93 is heavier at 10 grams, whereas the Hyperion is 4.5 grams. The Hyperion comes with no protective case, whereas the TE93 does. They both claim to have a range of 100 meters. The Hyperion is $55 and the TE93 is $54 from microfpv.eu, so they are about the same price. On appearance, the Hyperion looks very small and lightweight, with open circuit boards which give it a slightly frail look. And the TE93 is much more bulky and solid, but at the expense of some extra weight. The same goes for their antenna. The TE93 looks to have a more bulky, robust antenna, and again, on the Hyperion, it looks more frail. I would say that in a heavy crash, the TE93 is more likely to come off better. A plus side to the Hyperion, though, is that its channel selection is done via a button, and the TE93 is done via dip switches. I'm always a fan of a button over dip switches. My test platform is going to be this Picnic Quads frame with a Hubson flight control affixed to it. This might surprise some of you, but the Hubson is still the most reliable long-range micro-flyer that I have, since I don't trust the Ski Sky to go the distance after my flyaway with it. I am using my modified Hubson Spyhawk transmitter with a 5 watt Wi-Fi booster attached to it to ensure that the control signal can outperform the video signal. As these are both 5.8 GHz cameras, I can set the video feed on the Spyhawk transmitter by dialing into the correct frequency, but to record the footage I will be using the built-in DVR on my Fatshark goggles. The Hyperion comes with a servo connector attached to it. This is designed to plug into a 5 volt regulated receiver, so I have soldered a female servo connector to the positive and negative of the Hubson flight controller. The TE93 comes with a JST connector, so I will need to solder a female JST connector to the Hubson board. Of course, with both of these cameras, you can cut off the connector and solder it direct to the flight controller if you wish. I have attached the Hyperion to the Picnic Quads frame using miniature cable ties. The camera has these standoff posts as part of the unit, so I can wrap the cable ties around there. 
For the TE93, I'm going to be using the dual lock mechanism as previously used on the original TE93 review. The biggest difference between the two units is the weight, but on the little Hobson base copter this isn't too much of a problem. With the Hyperion attached, the copter weighs 36 grams, and with the TE93 it's 40 grams. So there's only really 4 grams between the two on the same copter when you add up all the extra weight of the connectors etc. And the original Hudson H107D weighs 41 grams, so with both cameras we are still under that weight. To make this a fair test, both cameras will be running on the same frequency of 5740, and the antenna used on the Fat Shark goggles is the Immersion RC Spiranet antenna. The flights will be done a few minutes apart, except for the night flights where conditions generally are the same anyway due to there being zero sunlight. Starting off with the Hyperion, the first thing I noticed is the extra wide field of view. It's quoted as having a 120 degrees field of view, but this is definitely at least 170 degrees, similar to the cheap Banggood camera I reviewed in the past. For some, this is either a good thing or a bad thing. For me, I don't mind it, but others might find that it distorts the image too much, and it does take some getting used to. Another thing that I initially noticed was that there seems to be a slight blur on the camera. This, no doubt, could be fixed by twisting the lens, but it's glued in solid, and I want to compare these cameras out of the box. I do believe that the screw thread on this camera is an M7, so if this angle is too wide for you, then you can swap it out for a genuine 120 degree lens from the 80816 camera. I can't confirm this though, as I say it is glued in solid and I don't want to risk removing it. Its specs quote a range of 50 meters to 100 meters. This figure is definitely conservative, as the trees at the back there are 120 meters away. It does feel like it's getting to the edge of its range at that point though, and I make a couple of early turns to ensure that I have got a full signal. The picture is crystal clear though, and there is minimum breakup. In fact, I tend to find that the picture on these micro quads is much better than you will get on a 250 mini quad, as there's less material that can be in the way of the antenna at any one time. The dynamic range of this camera in the daytime performs really well. I can see both the ground and the cloud detail in the picture, which makes it a good FPV experience. Onto the TE93, and of course you will notice the less distorted field of view with the 120 degree lens that comes with it. The picture has slightly more contrast than the Hyperion, and the view is more similar to the HS1177 camera that I use on my 250 mini quad. We have slightly less cloud detail than the Hyperion, however there seems to be less blur on this camera out of the box, and the lens that comes with it can be twisted with slight force if you want to refocus it without the need of any glue. Of course, as you can hear, we also have a microphone on the TE93, which isn't a deal breaker for me, but it would account for some of that extra weight. It does feel like the TE93 wants to go further than the Hyperion, whereas it seems a struggle to reach the trees on the Hyperion, with the TE93 I have to turn before it hits the trees. Both cameras exceeded my expectations, however, when it came to their range. Indoors, and the results are pretty similar, the Hyperion has the wide field of view which can either help you or hinder you depending on your preference. I find that threading the needle takes more getting used to as objects can appear further away than they actually are, however in this flight I did not clip any part of the walls or doors. The picture inside again is very clear with minimal breakup, despite the video signal having to penetrate through walls, which 5.8 GHz doesn't do too well in general, but here I am having a really good flight. The camera adjusts really well to changing light conditions, with the room at the back not having any lights on, I am still getting a good picture. Onto the TE93, and the narrower field of view makes threading the needle a little easier. Objects are more in proportion to where they actually are. The dynamic range is fine, and the picture is fine. 
the flight characteristics of the Hobson feel slightly better with the TE93. I think it's because the flight controller is designed to carry around 40 grams, which is the same weight of the Hobson H107D. In this test, more weight is better, but of course different flight controllers will give different results. The flight time is definitely not as long with the TE93 attached, giving around a 5 minute flight, compared to the Hyperion giving a 6 to 8 minute flight. So, here we are on board with the Hyperion in the dark, and surprisingly, again, it's really hard to pick between the two cameras. That lux value of 1 for the Hyperion is definitely wrong, I would say. As before, the only issue I noticed was a slight blur with the Hyperion, but that has been really picky. I have to say, it's been a while since I flew in the dark, and it's so much fun, especially with this little Hubson. It's so small it can fit anywhere, and with the surprising range of this camera, I can fly right to the end of the street with confidence. As mentioned previously on the channel, this street is exactly 100 meters long, so it's a good test. On this first flight, one of the LEDs on the Hubson board has gone out, which is why only one of the propellers are reflecting the blue light. It's an intermittent problem caused by a loose component on the flight controller, which I need to sort out. As for the TE-93, as shown in my initial review, it is also brilliant in the dark. I was expecting this one to perform a little bit better than the Hyperion with it having that 0.008 lux rating, but it seems that both cams have the same specs. And with only the darkest of street lighting, we still get this clear view. My eyes definitely cannot see as well as both of these cameras in this lighting, which is a credit to both of them. It's pretty hard to pick between these two cameras. They both outperform their specifications. They are the same price. I would say that if weight is your priority, then go for the Hyperion. But if extra strength, slightly better range, a less blurred picture, and a built-in microphone is your preference, then go for the TE-93. I hope you enjoyed watching this comparison video, and as always, thanks so much for watching, please continue to subscribe, cheers.